seal of God. Which of the Ten Commandments contain all the elements of a seal? It's in the middle commandment, in the longest commandment that has the name of God. It says, For in six days the Lord, Jehovah, made the heaven and the earth and the sea and all that is in them. God's, His name, the Creator, His territory are all there in that commandment. And that's why God says, don't forget this. It's the seal of God. It shows that you give him your time and your worship. The Sabbath contains the elements of the seal. So, we've identified what the seal of God is. What about the, and what the beast is now? What is the mark of the beast and its authority? All right, just looking now in a Catholic catechism, they teach question and answer format. What is the Sabbath day? Answer? Saturday is the Sabbath day. Question. Why do we observe Sunday instead of Saturday? Answer. We observe Sunday instead of Saturday because the Catholic Church transferred the solemnity from Saturday to Sunday. It wasn't from the Bible. It was transferred by the Church. It goes on to say, Have you any other ways of proving that the Catholic Church has power to institute festivals of precept? Answer, had the Catholic Church not such power, she could not have done that in which all modern religionists agree with her. She could not have substituted the observance of Sunday, the first day of the week, for the observance of Saturday, the seventh day of the week, a change for which there is no, zero, scriptural authority. You've got the law of man, you get getting friends, you've got traditions of man, you've got the law of God. You've got the seal of God, you got a mark of the beast's authority. Now, Pastor Doug, are you saying that people that go to church on Sunday have the mark of the beast? No. Stick with me. One of the characteristics of the beast's power, he would think to change times and laws. It says here in Desert Del Transcript, the Pope has the power to change times, to abrogate laws, and to dispense with all things, even the precepts of Christ. Did you know that? That's called blasphemy when it says that the leader of the church can even change the teachings of Christ, that's officially their teaching. That's why I told you, they don't blush. I showed you a picture of the Ten Commandments. The second commandment about idolatry is just like deleted. And they take the Sabbath, they make it the third commandment. And they change the day from the seventh to the first. And most modern religionists agree with that. And whether knowingly or unknowingly, they're paying homage to a man-made law. Of course the Catholic Church claims that the change was her act, and this act is a mark of her ecclesiastical power and authority in religious matters. That's from C.S. Thomas, the Cardinal. What does the second beast of Revelation 13 force all to receive? He caused how many? There's going to be a consolidation of power. He causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their forehead. No man might buy or sell unless he does. We'll talk a little about that tonight. Does anybody have the mark of the beast now? No. Why? Because it has not been a law. It's not being compel uh, compelled. People aren't making the choice. They're not informed on what the issues are. When they say you cannot buy or sell, Revelation 13, 17, and there's a law that you have to worship on the first day instead of the seventh day, that would be a sign. Number 15. Is the mark of the beast or the seal of God a visible mark? This is very important. Some Bible translations even say, don't get the tattoo in your forehead. It doesn't say that in the original. It says in the hand or in the forehead. What does that mean? If you look in Hebrews 10, 16, Thus says the Lord, I will put my law in their hearts and in their minds I will write them. The Bible says, whatever your hand finds to do, do it with your mind. What does that mean? Does it mean your hand goes off by itself or does it mean your actions? In the mind means in the thoughts. In the head means in the thoughts. In the hand means in the works. For example, you can read in Isaiah 59, 6, their works are works of iniquity and their acts of violence are in their hand. Their thoughts are thoughts of iniquity. It's talking about in the hand being the actions in the forehead and the thoughts. Let me give you one more. Exodus 
and it shall be for a sign unto thee upon thy hand and a memorial between thine eyes that the Lord's law might be in your heart. You can also read this in Deuteronomy chapter 6. These words I command you this day shall be in your heart. You shall bind them for a sign upon your hand. They shall be frontlets between your eyes. Very simply, if you don't have the law of God in your hand and in your head, you will have the mark of the beast in your hand and in your head. It's talking about the actions. If you're waiting for someone to get everyone to line up with a rubber stamp and go and stamp everybody on the forehead, that's not what's going to happen. It's something internal. The beast has a mark that represents its power and authority. Does God have a sign of his power? Yes. I gave them my what? My Sabbath. To be a sign between me and them that they might know that I am the Lord that sanctifies them. Hallow my Sabbath. It will be a sign between me and you that you might know that I am the Lord your God. Verily my Sabbath you will keep. For it is a sign between me and you throughout your generations. A sign. A seal that you might know that I am the Lord that does sanctify you. We just need to ask this question, friends, that Peter said, we ought to obey God rather than men. Who will you want to obey? You know, before we close our service today, we want to give you an opportunity to respond. I'd like to invite Charles and Kelly to come out. I sure appreciate the music they've been bringing to our event. And we've got some ushers that are standing by, and they're going to be giving you each a card. If they could do that right now.